about a week ago, then by a week prior, we were down here. These are your levels and you just have to follow them. And by the way, this is one of the best things about technical analysis is it Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway joins us today with his latest review of the traditional and Bitcoin markets with latest earnings reports and stocks analysis. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin hit two-week lows around the April 30 Wall Street open after new spot price exchange traded funds, ETFs, disappointed. The already cautious mood turned firmly bearish as it emerged that the first day's trading volumes for Hong Kong's new Bitcoin ADFs had fallen considerably below expectations. The new products managed $12.4 million, still impressive for the size of the local market, per Bloomberg intelligence analyst Eric Balkunas. In a reaction on X, formerly Twitter, Balkunas gave a distinctly positive impression of the first day's performance. East vs. West The U.S. did $740 million in assets and $4.6 billion in trading. These are far below that, but if you adjust for the size of their mect, it is diff story. A quiv of $25 billion plus and $1.6 billion, respectively. We got the employment cost index at 830. It was hotter than expected. So another indicator. Now, by the way, if you look back, how many times does the market move on the employment cost index or whatever it was? Almost never. But now it means something because inflation is rearing its ugly head and there's potential for stagflation. So the markets did see a little bit of selling on the back of that. Again, we are seeing the markets opening or at least set to open lower today. Now, just going to the charts here on the S&P 500, we've had a bounce, right? So there's your bounce. But remember, once you break the trend, and the trend, in all fairness, lasted for a freaking long time, right? I mean, going back here, you could go back to October. October is when we started this tighter and tighter wedge pattern, which, again, is a very distinctive trend. There's no doubt about it. This was a trend higher. It was a buy-the-dip market. Everything was great. Problem is, we rolled over, now you've broken the trend. And once you break the trend, the general consensus based on probabilities of technical analysis is that you've now broken it and bounces eventually get sold into. And that's what I'm expecting to happen here, folks. Now, again, it's not going to happen overnight. Well, listen, with, with the Fed and with all these earnings, maybe it does. But in general, it's something that will take a few weeks to kind of roll over. Um, but again, we probably are at closer to the high end of the bounce of this move. The one, the one kind of little bit of an indicator I'm watching here is if we look at the low of this reversal candle, that's now become my kind of target. And we're basically into that or close to it. We might get one more update here and there. Maybe Amazon has great earnings after the bell. We will find out. But ultimately, I would expect a rollover. Now, let's get into some of the earnings from this morning. Eli Lilly reporting earnings this morning here. They, again, as expected, had monster numbers, right? Their weight loss drugs, their diabetes drugs, it's, on, it's pumping on all cylinders. The stock surged just about to 800. We literally kissed 800. Believe it or not, pre-market, and this was about 7 in the morning when the earnings came out, I put out a short order just above 800 at 803.5 as a day trade as I had a key level up there plus the even number. I didn't get filled. Just the nature of it. But what we can see is it has rolled over a little bit, although it still is very, very strong. Okay, so if we flip over to the daily chart, look at this channel. And this kind of starts to make sense. And I love making sense out of chaos. You guys know that. Here we have this channel where every time we kind of come to the end, low of this, we rally up here, right? So what were we doing right into this area going into earnings? It made the probabilities of a bounce likely. And that's exactly what we did. Now, interestingly enough, the midpoint of the line, look at how this is right to the midpoint right here. And even right in here, midpoint, midpoint right here. But the $800 level is right at the midpoint, which is also a double top high from this area right there. So you did have a lot of resistance at 800, which explains why I was trying to short it as a day trade, but I just did not get filled. And again, that's just the breaks of the game. There, are, To be honest, Eli Lilly 
pre-market especially is pretty thin so it's hard to know exactly where it's going to top or bottom you just do the best you can you always have to use limit orders at least i use always limit orders because it's way too risky trading pre-market without limit orders or after market okay so there's our little analysis on this do i expect eventually eli Lilly to curve over and break down yes i do now again this is more looking forward we're looking out towards let's say three months six months nine months out the concept here is very simple. It's the NVIDIA concept, it's the Tesla concept. You have these weight loss drugs, but more and more companies are like, holy cow, look at the margins and the demand for these weight loss drugs. We need to produce some too. So they're all gonna come to market. It's gonna make, it's gonna drive down margins. And then ultimately the valuation won't be able to make sense on Eli Lilly. So eventually it breaks down, but that doesn't mean it's not going to stay up in the near term here. And it is up on earnings. Investors are rewarding it. Now I said the Tesla kind of thought process, and that's again, remember 2021, Tesla was the only game in town for quality EVs. They dominated the market. The, the hype was there. And then look at what's happened since. Now granted, they've had a great bounce over the last five trading days, but the stock, in all fairness, is way, 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 way off its all-time highs. And I think the same thing will ultimately happen to NVIDIA. People want in. Companies, semiconductor companies, want in on those margins that NVIDIA has for their AI chips. They're going to produce them. Might take a year, but eventually those margins are going to come crashing down probably to like 10 to 20% versus where they are now in the 70 to 80% realm. Okay, on to the next one here. We had earnings from PayPal. PayPal is up on the back of earnings. You can see right here trading at 7103. The high of the day was right around this 73 level. Now I want to show you something so cool in the advanced trader news on our website. Listen, don't freak out one way or the other. I don't care if you're a crypto investor or not. Just follow the levels. Let the levels speak to you. Calm down and let the levels speak to us. So Bitcoin today is falling and tagging our lower level here. Now, is this a time to panic? No, nope, not at all, because you haven't broken yet, let alone confirmed. Now you break, now you gotta start being a little concerned if you're a bull, all right? If you're a bear, that's what you're rooting for. You're rooting for a break in confirmation. But again, same thing, we came up here on the, oh, about a week ago, then by a week prior, we were down here. These are your levels and you just have to follow them. And by the way, this is one of the best things about technical analysis is it really does take away the hopes and dreams and i don't mean that in a bad way i mean like when we get involved in trading when i was a young youngster when i was a whippersnapper right i would just like go into a trade because oh i like this or i think this or whatever and i would just be like on the edge of my seat like oh my gosh oh my gosh and then as i learned technical analysis i'm like all right wait a minute so it's trading in this range whether you're bullish or bearish it's just trading in the range just relax kick back let the chart tell me when to either exit a trade or get in a trade all right so again bitcoin the point being is we've just touched the 61k level we talked about that yesterday as being support we now see do we bounce back up or do we break and close below and again what i'm looking for is a daily close a pierce doesn't matter to me they do that all the time the algos will do that to rip whip you out of the trade i need to see a close with confirmation as you guys know all right, the other trade here, and this is one that in my service, my smart money crypto, we just literally took profits a little bit before this game plan started on this trade. It was a short trade on NEAR, near. And again, this is purely technical. And that's it's so liberating to be like, listen, I, I frankly don't even know anything about NEAR. But if it has a chart, I can trade it. And what I mean by that is you simply take these levels down here, right? We take these levels here and we see a trend line and then notice how we broke and then we retrace and look at all these little tails up here just kissing that level and that told you there was so much resistance there so what did we do in smart money crypto we shorted it and we covered it right here today now you might say well why don't you let it fall more now part of it too is like listen bitcoin's at support if bitcoin bounces chances are this is going to bounce so you have to kind of make the determination at what point are you happy with the money that you've made on a trade and where do you want to exit and again do i think it could come down here yeah i mean if bitcoin breaks this thing is going to go lower there's no doubt about it but for me it's all about putting wins up on the board i always like to say this one of my favorite quotes is no one went broke taking a profit think about it no one went broke. Could be a $5 profit, could be a $5 million profit. My point is, if you're consistently taking profits, 
you're doing just fine in the market. Plus, it's all about your win rate, right? Can you have a 70, 75, 80% win rate? That will take care of itself, assuming you don't go all in on every position, right? And that's the scary part when people do that, frankly. Okay, next up, we got to talk gold here. Another technical analysis um, miracle. Well, not miracle. It's just what technical analysis teaches us. So what did I tell you guys yesterday in the previous days? I said, guys, topping tail right here was bearish. And then we got this big sell-off candle. And then what's this pattern right here? Quiz. I'm sure you guys are saying it. Some of you guys are. It's a bear flag, right? Bear's flag in spirit of bear flag. What's price on gold doing today? It is dropping. We're now down $32 on gold today. And again, technically speaking, this is just the beginning. We really should see further downside on gold here and see this thing come in. I do have a buy level, and I've told you guys this in these game plans. My buy level continues to be right here. And then eventually, if we get down to really around these pivot points right in here, right around basically 2200 to 2075, that's, that's my zone of buy on gold. But again, look at how the chart just guided us. Topping tail, boom. Okay, now we flip from being bullish to bearish. All right, drop, bear flag. Remain bearish, bear flag should play out. Okay, here it goes, right? So again, taking it away from weight, I really, you know, because you guys know I love gold. I love gold and, uh, you know, I think it's going to eventually go much, much higher. We talked about crazy price targets yesterday, but doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore that and be like, oh, well, I only believe, don't, like this is what people do, and especially in crypto and other things, like, they literally will rip anyone who has a different view. It's like, no, listen, the, the chart, it's different time frames. Like the chart can come down like this and then it can still go like that. So don't worry about it. If you have your thesis, as long as it's a thesis not based on hopes and dreams, then use your thesis. Like for me, my Bitcoin bull upside thesis for the next 10 years is that I just think the money printing is going to continue and that the debt issue is going to continue and the Fed will stimulate. And all of those things make me believe Bitcoin is around for the long term, just like gold, right? I think gold's going a lot higher. But in the near term, it doesn't mean that I'm bullish in the one to five week period or one to two month period. And I think that's so important for people to understand in the scheme of things. Like just because someone's going against your general view doesn't really matter. Just as long as, again, the only people that get upset is when, they're, when their views are based on hopes and dreams or they're betting the farm on it essentially, which is never good. Um, silver, this was even a better bear flag and look at it play out. Again, silver, my buy zone is between 26 right here and basically 2550. So you have this level somewhere in here. That's where I start to inch back in. Now, will I go all in? No, first of all, I never go all in on any trade. And number two, I dollar cost average. If I like this for the long term, I'll buy a little here, buy a little here, buy a little here. And I'll even leave some in case it goes lower because I'm, I'm wrong plenty of times. It might go lower. And so I want to be able to dollar cost average as long as my long term thesis still holds up. Quickly, just going to oil real quick here, guys. We have oil down ticking a little bit on the charts. I'm beginning to think this might be a head and shoulders pattern, guys. And again, it's still holding the confirmed level. But that's starting to be concerning. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, guys. You get a weak jobs number on Friday, and the market starts thinking the U.S. is heading for recession. This is going to go a lot lower. Now, it hasn't triggered yet, and it's still holding confirmed support, but it is on my radar as a new pattern. Natural gas was an awesome mover yesterday. We actually today made a new high. We are getting close to resistance here, but I still think it's got a little bit more upside to go. And lastly, I just want to show you guys uh, cocoa here. So cocoa finally cracked. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.